Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a prep form to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. So friends, we are here with the series on tap changes in the transformer. So in today's video, we are moving to part two of video of this series and we are going to learn about offload tap changes. So let's get started. We have a series of videos on many topics about charging, discharging, battery panel to breaker wiring, wiring schedule, CT schedule, CTPT wiring, uh, various types of testing of transformer. Please go and check it out on our uh, links given in the description box and uh, see all the videos from our channel. So friends, continuing about the video of, on tap changer in the transformer, we have already discussed what is the importance of tap changer. We need a tap changer to maintain the output voltage and uh, why is the voltage rating is rated and uh, we have discussed about the importance of rated voltage. So what is rated voltage, uh, how it affects all the electrical equipments. We have also seen all the nameplate details in our previous video. You can get the link in the description box. What is the requirement of grid code? What are the minimum and maximum voltage levels that as a grid can have? So all the standards are also mentioned. What is the different kinds of tappings? How these tappings are done? So we have discussed all this in our previous video. You can go and check in the link in the description box. It is about very basics about taps in the transformer. And we have also seen how this transformer principle works. So and how the tap changing is done. So tap changes in transformer. And in today's video, we are going to see about offload tap changer. So mainly there are two types of tap changes in a transformer. First one is the on-road tap changer and second one is the off-road tap changer. As the name suggests, in the on-road tap changer, we have to change the tap positions in the transformer when the transformer is in on condition. Okay, so when the transformer is live, we can change the taps of the transformer that is known as on-load tap changer. And off-load tap changers, uh, again as the name suggests, when the transformer is in off conditions, we have to turn off the transformer first and only after that we can change the tap settings of the transformer. So in today's video, we are going to learn about the off-load tap changers. So generally offload tap changers are seen in the transformer having smaller capacity about 100 kVA, 200 kVA. But uh, again uh, up to 500 MV also we have seen offload tap changes in the transformer. But then these transformers have to be in such a way that they have the possibility of turning off the transformer easily. This kind of offload tap ch changes cannot be provided to any industry which is running for 24 hours, which is having the power requirement for 24 hours. So in that case, any disturbance for changing of tap will hamper the industry power supply, okay, and that is not done. So in case where it is okay to turn off the transformer or to turn off the power supply for some time, okay, and do the tap changing process, in that case only we are using offload tap changes. Otherwise for higher capacity transformers and transformers which cannot be turned off easily, in that cases we have onload tap changes always. So in today's video, as I told, we are going to learn about offload tap changes. So let's learn in detail about the offload tap changes. So offload tap changer, again, this is the nameplate of a transformer having offload tap changer. So you can see on the HV side, there are uh, five tap positions mentioned and the voltage levels at which this tapping is done. Okay. And on the LV side, you will get a 440 volt output. Okay. So let's see in detail. So these are all the tap positions from one to five. For tap position 1, the voltage level is 11.550 volts, that is 11.55 kV. 
again at tap 2 11.275 kV tap 3 is the normal tap 11 kV so in case if the voltage of the system is higher the tap has to come at position 2 or 1 according to the voltage level of the system and whenever the tap whenever the voltage of the grid or the system is low about 10.7 kV then tap position has to be moved to tap position 4 and whenever the system voltage is more lower than at tap position 5. This is on the HV side of the transformer and for any case the LV output will always remain 440 volts only. Now we will see how the step positions are internally provided to the transformer and how we can change the step positions in order to maintain the 440 volt rated LV output. See, this is the winding diagram of a transformer. Uh, this is the secondary side of the transformer where you will get a constant 440 volt output. On the primary side, there are number of tappings done. So, the secondary output will be between these two points and the primary input we have to provide between these two points. Right? These tappings are given different numbers. Tap position Okay, so this is not the this put up position, but only simple general numbers are given over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 8. Right? Different numbers are given of this winding sections. You can see different sections are made because of this steppings taken out from the primary winding. So now let us see how you can work at the position 1. Okay. See, you can see the primary winding is divided into two sections. If I want to connect these two sections, I will short between 4 and 5. I will have to provide a short link between 4 and 5 number of tapping. Okay. And what will happen if I do such thing? If I short 4 and 5, this winding will be complete. This will be a complete winding. Now, tapping 4 and 5 are shorted. That means this is the total number of winding turns that has increased. As we have discussed in the previous video about transformer principle, we know that number of turns is directly proportional to number of voltage. So, turns ratio is equals to number of turns on the primary and voltage on the primary. Okay. So, if I, the general scenario is, if I want higher voltage, if I want higher voltage, that means I want more number of turns in my winding. If I want lower voltage, if I want lower voltage, the windings inside my primary, the turns inside my primary has to be less. Right? Now let us see how this is achieved. If I connect 4 and 5, okay, if I connect 4 and 5, that means if the voltage is highest, system voltage is highest 11.55 kV then I want the whole winding in picture. I want the largest number of turns to get the largest power input. Okay. Now if I want to reduce the voltage level say it is voltage level of the system has reduced. It has come to around only 11 kV. Okay. That means I have to now reduce the number of turns because the voltage is lesser compared to the previous one, right? So now what we will have to do, we have to remove some part of this winding. How do I remove this? I will connect short between tapping number 3 and tapping number 6. So if I connect between tapping number 3 and 6, a short circuit, something like this, what happens is, Windings between these two parts are reduced, number of turns are reduced and my winding is directly now connected in this path. Right? So that will give me 11 kV volts as input for the primary and my output will always remain secondary constant as 440 volts. Now this is the general concept I am talking about. But now let us see in detail how this is achieved in the transformer. See, based on different kinds of winding, there are these different kinds of taps. 
arranged in a circular position drum like this and all these are connected in a transformer the primary winding and secondary windings are separate part from this oltc okay so tap changing is a completely out different process compared to these two windings right so over here we are only and only talking about this tap changing process so for that portion different this kind of tappings are taken out into this particular arrangement now if i want to set the voltage system voltage is say 11.5 kv then i as i mentioned i have to short between 4 and 5 so this kind of arrangement is that okay to short 4 and 5 positions right now if i want to if the system voltage is reduced to 11 kv so this will move and it will short between 4 and 6 so 4 and 6 is shorted that means the system voltage is up to 11.275 kv and if i move further lower 11 kv the connection between 3 and 6 is done again more winding is reduced and more voltage is reducing okay so over here uh, you can see this connections are mentioned and this is the tap position on the outside you will only know the tap positions this is for the internal use purpose only okay for the understanding and how this positions are working for that purpose only this are provided but our main focus on the outward will always remain on this voltage level of the inputs or the system and the tap position that we require right so this kind of switch is provided in the tap changing process again it will move from 3 to 7 so this 3 and 7 number of tappings are shorted this will again reduce the winding turns and reduce the voltage up to 10.72 kv and when it is a shorting is done between tapping 2 and tapping 7 highest number of windings are reduced okay now the number of turns are very less and that why the voltage output will also be less for this okay now secondary side voltage will not be affected it will be providing only 440 volts all this all this arrangement is done only and only to maintain this 440 volts right now if we cannot move further from this position in this switch this is the last position and if we want to come to the highest voltage level we will have to again come back like this okay now why this is called as offload tap changer what is the reason for calling it as offload tap changer whenever you are changing the tap position at any particular instant of time you will see the movement in the switch will be like this it will be connecting one particular it will be connecting one particular point at a time like this see at this time it is be connected with at point number 6 only it is not connected at 4 or it is not shorting 3 so when the tap position is like this at any point of time what does this indicate this indicate that there is a open circuit in the winding winding is open circuited because this switch is connected between point 6 only it is not connected to 5 4 7 any other point now what happens if the winding is open circuited there is a chance of high fault current in the transformer right because my primary is open circuited so a primary should never be open circuited like this okay it will cause a very high voltage flux and it may cause a fault inside the transformer okay so this is it because of this position inside the switch at any one time it is called as a offload tap changer that is why we have to turn off the transformer first then change the tap position as per the system voltage requirement 
okay once the tap changing process is done only after that we shall turn on the transformer see again at this point it is connecting point number 3 only so my winding will be open over here and it may cause some fault in many transformers this kind of arrangement is also seen so if you want to change the tapping so you can move this rod like this okay the tap position has changed and again it has changed so this kind of tapping arrangement is also provided for some kind of offload tap changes on this kind of wheel arrangement is you can see on the top of the transformer um, moving that wheel you can change the tap position so we have seen about offload tap changes in today's video and we will see onload tap changes in the next part of this series keep watching thank you